Hi folks, welcome to our discussion on uh, pH, pOH, um, mixing of strong acids and bases, and what happens when we put ionic salts in water. Okay, so as you'll see in your notes, you're introducing this idea of, we've heard this idea of pH before, but we've never had to calculate it. And I've given you this information that the pH is the negative log of H3O plus concentration. Okay, and I've also said that pH plus pOH equals 14, or that pKW. So I just wanna show you on the calculator exactly how you're gonna enter these in to go from this kW here to this value of 14.0. And I'll do that again with the, the pH, pOH of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Okay, so this is mine. The calculator you use might have to be a little bit different in terms of how you enter it but let's just work our way through this. Okay, so I'm doing the negative log, okay, and on my calculator, it automatically brings up the brackets on there. Hopefully you can see that, right? And so I'm just gonna enter in this value then of one times 10 to the negative 14, and just closing off all my brackets. Okay, so, I don't know which is the best for you to see that. Hope you guys can see all that on there. And I just hit enter, and it comes out with that value of 14. Now it doesn't do the sig figs, you're gonna have to enter those in, but that sig fig rule I talked about, when taking the log of a number, the result must have the same number of decimal places as sig figs in the original number. So I guess since I'm doing 1.00, those are all three sig figs, this would give me a PKW of 14. Point zero zero zero. Okay, so number of sig figs in our original value is the number of decimal places in our log value. Okay, now I'm gonna do this a few other times here um, based on that chart that we have on there to help you understand what's going on. Okay. Okay. So I've got this chart uh, slightly different on your notes, but very similar. And essentially we're just gonna use this to help figure out what these different values are going to give us. Okay, so starting with our one molar HCl. Okay, well, strong acid, therefore our concentration is also gonna be that 1.0 molar. Now. Down here, our OH minus concentration. We are going to take our KW value, our one times 10 to the negative 14, divided by our H3O concentration, divided by one, gives us our value here. So this is where we get that 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 as our concentration of the OH minus, okay? And very similarly, when we look at the NaOH, we've got 1.0 molar for the NaOH because that's fully disassociated. And again, doing that same process, Kw divided by OH minus concentration to get our OH, our H3O plus. Okay. So that part there is just review from previous lessons and hopefully we're all good with that stuff. Okay, but now what we really wanna do is we wanna understand how to do the pH and pOH. Okay, so pH, based on our H3O plus concentration. Okay, so once again, our pH is then going to be negative log of our H3O plus concentration, which is just one. And so that gives me a pH value of zero. Okay. Now pH scale does go from zero all the way to 14. Okay. And now we've got two ways to solve for this pOH down here. Okay. We can either say that if pH plus pOH is 14, I can take my 14 minus my zero. Right. So if we look at this pH plus pOH equals 14. 
as we just showed in the previous one and we've listed in the notes. Okay, so then I can say, well, then my POH must be 14.0 based on my value of zero for my pH. Now, I can also say that my POH is the negative log of my OH minus concentration. So, once again, we're going to do negative log of my POH or my OH minus concentration, which is one times 10 to the negative 14. And I get a value of 14, which is also what I did in the calculation here. Okay. Now, vice versa, if we're looking at our sodium hydroxide situation, our POH is the negative log of our OH minus. So we go negative log of one, and I get that value again of zero for a one molar situation of sodium hydroxide. To get my pH, once again, I can do 14 minus my pOH, or negative log of this value. So once again, that's negative log of one times 10 to the negative 14, which also gives me that 14. Okay, so now once again, this is how my calculator is, uh, the order I have to enter these in. Play with your calculators, understand the order that you have to do those in. If you're having difficulties with that, make sure you send me a message on Teams and I can help you address those concerns. All right, folks, welcome back. Um, the next chart that we see, it looks something like this, where we've got three different items and we wanna understand what the pH and the pOH is from that H3O plus concentration. Okay. So let's start off with our orange juice. We have a concentration of H3O plus at 3.2 times 10 to the negative four. So since all of these are being given our H3O plus, we're gonna use the negative log of these values to get our pH. We're then gonna figure out our pOH by doing 14 minus that pH value to solve this column here. Okay, so for orange juice, negative log of 3.2 times 10 to the negative four, and I get a value of 3.49485. Now, want to pay attention to the sig figs. We have two sig figs here, which means I need two decimal places in my pH, so I get a 3.49, right? Two sig figs, two decimal places. When I go to find my pOH, I take my 14 minus this value and I get 10.51. Okay. Now, let's take a look at our next one, our milk of magnesia. Noticing here, I have three sig figs. I'm going to need three decimal places for my pH. So once again, it's the negative log of 2.52 times 10 to the negative 11. And I get 10.5985, which gives me a value of 10.599. Three sig figs, three decimal places. Subtracting this value from 14, I get a 3.401 for a pOH. Okay, last one we have on here now is the stomach acid of 0.031 molar. So negative log 0 0.031. Okay, I get 1.508. Pay attention, two sig figs here, so 1.51, two decimal places here. And that leads me to my POH of 12.49. Okay, so hopefully that works out helping you to solve those ones. Now, when we're looking at this next one, what if we have our pH 
and we want to find our P. Oh, uh, sorry, we have our pH. We want to find our H3O concentration. Okay. Well, we're using this. If pH equals the negative log of that H3O plus concentration, we can also find our H3O plus concentration is equal to the power of 10 raised to the negative pH. Okay, because that's essentially all that log is doing is it's just converting these two back and forth. So that hopefully that makes sense. But let's try this example. Okay, we have lemon juice that has a pH of 2.31. So my H3O plus concentration is going to equal 10 to the negative 2.31. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna take our 10 to the power button and type in that negative 2.31. And I get a value here of 0 0.0048. Nine seven eight. Okay. Now we got to be careful here. I have two decimal places here, which means I need to have two sig figs in my answer. So this gives me then a H three O plus concentration of four point nine times ten to the negative three molar. Right? This would round to 4.9, and then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4.3 times 10 to the negative 3. All right. Now, this transfer back and forth between the H3O plus, the OH minus, the pH, the POH, or back and forth, anything, we can simplify it using this diagram that I provided you with. Now, the two easiest portions of here is this top one going from the H3O plus concentration to the OH minus concentration, okay? For that one, we're using this KW equation where the H3O plus concentration times the OH minus equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, okay? So if you have the OH concentration, the H3O plus is that 1.0 times 10 to the 14 divided by OH minus, or if you have the H3O plus, the OH minus is the 1.00 times 10 to the 14 divided by that H3O plus concentration, allowing for a very easy one-step calculation back and forth, which we've been doing already. Now, the other really easy one to deal with is going from the pH to the POH or POH to pH. Since the sum of these two values is equal to 14, if we know one, we subtract it from 14 to get to the other. Okay, so that's probably the easiest way to do that. Now, the challenging part comes in going from here to here or here to here, or same from here, down, here, up. Okay, now, if we have our pH and we're trying to go up to the H3O plus, remember, we have our H3O plus concentration is equal to 10 to the negative pH. We also have something similar over here, where it is the OH minus concentration is 10 to the negative POH. Okay, so you've got that on there. I just wanna make sure that we understand that if we have our pH, we can work our way up by doing 10 to the negative pH, or if we have our POH, we can work our way up by doing 10 to the negative POH. Okay, or if we wanna work our way down, we can say that the pH is equal to the negative log of our H3O plus concentration. Okay, so this is to work our way up. This one's to work our way down. This is to work our way up. Or we can say that our pOH is equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration, and that's our way to work down. Okay, so you have that on there. On your notes um, you can always rewrite this out draw this out um, it's just a good shorthand method to help you understand how to go back and forth between one 
or the other. Okay, let's look at an example where we've got one concentration and we've got to work our way to solve all these other pieces. Okay, so we are provided with a 0 0.1 molar solution of aspirin. And this gives us a pH equal to 2.27. We need to find out our pOH, our H3O plus, and our OH minus concentrations. Okay, and we just wanna be able to make sure we can go back and forth between these. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with the easy one here. Our pOH is just going to equal 14 minus that pH value. And this gives me a pOH of 11.73. All right, that's not too bad. Now, our H3O plus concentration, this is equal to 10 to the negative pH. Okay, so I plug in my value of 10 to the negative 2.27, the pH that I was given, and I get this value here. Okay, now we gotta be careful. Our pH has two decimal places, so that means I need two sig figs in my H3O plus concentration. So I'm only gonna look at the 0.537, or in this case, the 5.4 times 10 to the negative three. And since we're talking concentration, that is in molar. Okay. Now, our OH minus concentration, I can do this in two different ways. I'm gonna go with the easier method here, which is gonna be 10 to the negative POH, or at least I think it's easier. And so I'm gonna take 10 to the negative 11.73. And I get a concentration here of 1.86 times 10 to the negative 12. Again, two sig figs, this is going to be 1.9 times 10 to the negative 12 molar. Okay, and now just to kind of go back and prove that all of these things uh, work out in any of those four methods I sh showed you on that uh, diagram, I'm going to take my OH concentration times my H3O plus concentration, and that should equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So 5.4 times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by 1.9 times 10 to the negative 12. Oops. So 5.4 times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by 1.9 times 10 to the negative 12. I get 1.026 times 10 to the negative 14. Since we have two sig figs, if I'm going to two sig figs on my calculator, I get that 1.0 times 10 to the 14 that I was looking for. Okay, just showing that we have multiple ways of going in and around to solve these. They all will give us the same answers. All right, so now that we've talked about our pH and our pOH, our HO plus concentration, our OH minus concentration, and how we can go back and forth with those, we're now gonna start talking about how we can get these values by mixing acids and bases. We're gonna start off with just strong acids and bases this week. And then next week, we're gonna come into talking about the, um, what happens when we're dealing with weak acids and weak bases. Okay, so like I said, strong acids, strong bases, we are talking full ionization, um, which makes these calculations a little bit easier. Now. You'll notice that I have um, some information there for you. If our H3O plus concentration is greater than our OH minus concentration. Now, 
we have to dilute these first. Okay, the dilution portion is very important. Okay, now if this is the case, our H3O plus is greater than our OH minus, then we're going to get an H3O plus final concentration that is equal to the H3O plus dilution minus that OH minus dilution. Okay, because if we've got more of the H3O plus, it's going to combine with the OH minus to make pure water, and then it'll use up all that OH minus. Right? If we're taking away all that, we'll leave whatever's left over is the amount of H3O plus that's in our solution, and that allows us to find our pH. Okay. We also have the vice versa, uh, where if the OH minus concentration is greater than H3O plus, then our OH minus final would be the OH minus dilute minus the H3O plus dilute. Now, just seeing that as is might not make the most sense. So let's take a look at some example. We want to find the final pH of mixing 30 milliliters of 0 0.40 molar nitric acid, one of our strong acids, with 70 mils of 0 0.20 molar NaOH, okay? Shall we start with a balanced equation here? We've got HNO3 plus NaOH. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so we don't have to worry about any molar calculations here. Okay, now, what we do need to find out, though, is our H3O plus diluted, okay? So we are going to take our initial concentration multiplied by the volume that we started with divided by the total volume of our solution at the end. All right, for this we are using C1V1 equals C2V2, okay? Our concentration times the volume equals our concentration divided by, or times the volume. Okay. Now, this gives me a value of 0 0.12 molar. If I look at my OH minus dilution, for this one I have my 0 0.20 molar times by my initial volume divided by my total volume and I get 0 0.14 molar. So in this situation, my diluted OH minus is greater than my diluted OH0 plus. So my OH minus final equals my OH minus diluted, my 0 0.14 molar minus my H3O plus diluted of 0 0.12 molar. And this gives me a 0 0.02 molar OH minus concentration. Okay. POH is the negative log of this value. Okay, so the negative log of 0 0.02 gives me a POH of 1.7. I can then take my pH is equal to 14 minus my POH, and that gives me a value of 12.3. Okay, now we, we've known for a very long time Acidic solutions are anything between one uh, a pH of 0 to 6, and anything that would be basic would be anything that would have a pH of 8 to 14. Now, based on this, I have more OH minus, right? It's a 0.14 molar than the 0.12. So that means once we have that neutralization of these two, I have 0.02 molar OH minus. Since I have a stronger OH minus concentration, that means I am a more basic 
solution, which means my pH should be between 8 and 14. We got a pH value of 12.3. That lets us know as a quick double check that that worked for this equation. All right, our second example here. Uh, we want to find the overall pH of mixing 50 mils of this 0.2 molar sulfuric acid with 100 mils of 0.4 molar sodium hydroxide. Same first step, we're going to figure out that H3O plus once we dilute it. Okay, so now this is where we got to be careful. I have H2SO4. Okay. So we're gonna make the simplification and we're gonna assume that all of this gets diluted. And so we're gonna say that we start off with this 0 0.200 molar multiplied by the fact that we get two moles of H3O plus for every one mole of the H2SO4. We have to take that molar ratio into consideration here. And then I'm also need to multiply that by my initial volume divided by my final volume, okay? So ignoring this middle portion here, we're just looking at a straight up dilution calculation, but because we do have this molar ratio, we have to take that into consideration. And when I multiply this all out, I end up with a 0 0.1333 molar. My OH minus diluted, again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so I can take my 0 0.400 multiplied by my volume ratio, and I get a concentration of 0 0.2667 molar. Now, these are both being repeated out, right? So when I go to figure this out, I have greater OH minus than I do H3O plus. So my final OH minus concentration is going to be my OH minus dilute minus my H3O plus dilute. And that gives me a value of 0 0.1333 molar. Once again, since I have my OH minus, I'm gonna figure out my pOH, okay, is the negative log of this value. I get a pOH value of 0 0.875. I can then use that to figure out my pH. Of 13.12. Five. Okay, now everything in our values up top in our information has three sig figs. So when I convert that to pH, I need to make sure I have three decimal places. Okay, so that's 13.125. Okay. Okay, our next example that I have here, I've just written out some of this to make it a little bit quicker. A student adds 35 mils of hydrochloric acid with a pH of 2.0 to 15 mils of sodium hydroxide with a pH of 12. Okay, now when we're given the pHs as opposed to the concentrations, it adds an extra step. So the first thing we need to do is this part here. Okay, so this is our first step. And that's to figure out what the H3O plus concentration was for our hydrochloric and what the OH minus concentration was for our sodium hydroxide. So H3O plus original is 10 to the negative pH. Well, we have the pH. So 10 to the negative 2 gives me 0 0.10 molar. Now my OH minus concentration is 10 to the negative pOH. Well, we were given the pH of sodium hydroxide. And our pOH then is also that 2.00. So again, my 10 to the negative pOH or 10 to the negative 2, I get an OH minus concentration for the original volume of 0.01 molar. 
okay? Now I have my concentrations. Now I can dilute those, okay? So my H2O plus concentration is my 0 0.01 times the 35 mils original divided by the total volume of 50. And this gives me 0 0.0070 molar. My OH minus concentration is my, my diluted concentration is my original concentration times the original volume divided by the total volume and I end up with 0 0.0030 molar. Okay. So once again, we had to figure out the original concentrations from the pHs and pOHs that we had. Okay. Then we can use those original concentrations to figure out our diluted concentrations. So first step, second step. Now, we just want to look at this and say that our H3O plus final is going to equal my diluted H3O plus, my 0 0.0070 minus my diluted OH minus 0 0.0030. And I get a final H3O plus concentration of 0 0.004. Okay, get this out of the way here. I can then say that my pH is the negative log of my H3O plus. Okay, so if I do the negative log of 0 0.0040, I end up with a value of 2.40. Okay. Two decimal places in our original pH gives us two sig figs for every calculation. Two sig figs in our concentration, when we go to do our pH, that gives us back two decimal places in that pH. Okay. Hopefully this helps with this more complex version. We have one more example that involves some extra steps. Let's get to that one now. All right, so last example of mixing these uh, strong acids and strong bases together. This last one is what mass of sodium hydroxide needs to be added to 500 milliliters of this 0 0.020 molar hydrogen iodide acid, or sorry, hydroiodic acid um, to obtain a final pH of 2.50. Okay, well, this is one of those excess reagent problems from Chem 11, um, but twisted around to have this pH portion. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, we have this is what we have. We have an H3O concentration of 0 0.020 molar. Okay. Now, what we need, sorry, I'll switch colors here, try and keep this as organized as possible so we don't get confused. So H3O plus concentration that we need is to give us this pH of 2.5. And so that, that what we need here is 10 to the negative pH. So 10 to the negative 2.5 gives me 0 0.00316 molar. Okay. So this is the concentration that we're starting with. This is the concentration we need to have to get to this pH value. Okay. Well, to go from what we have to what we need, we need to add in some sodium hydroxide. Okay, so if we need to add in some hydroxide into this situation, okay, what we're going to look at then here is that the OH minus concentration that we need, okay, is going to equal the H3O plus 
concentration that we have minus the H3O plus concentration that we need. If you get a negative value for your OH minus concentration, then we made a mistake in here, okay? Either in the subtraction or in one of these calculations. So that gives you a little hint there. If you get a negative concentration, that's not possible, okay? So if I take my 0.02 molar that I have minus the 0 0.00316 that I need to have, I find out that my concentration for OH minus is 0 0.0168 molar. That's the concentration. Okay. But we didn't, we weren't asked what concentration, we were asked what mass. Okay, so we need to take this and we need to calculate what that is. Okay. So if we take our 0 0.0168 moles per liter okay we can multiply that by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide of 40.0 grams per mole now doing that my moles cancel out and i'm in grams per liter but again i need to know overall mass so I've got to take into consideration this times 0 0.500 liters, okay? And that, once all multiplied, gives me a value of 0 0.34 grams of sodium hydroxide that needs to be added to 500 mils of 0 0.02 molar hydroidic acid to get that correct pH, okay? Hopefully that works out. Um, you have questions from these first two sections uh, listed in your notes. Please try those out. Let me know if you have any questions by posting those questions in our Teams page. Okay, next up, let's talk about hydrolysis. All right, so like I said, we wanna talk about this hydrolysis situation. Um, and so hydrolysis is just the reaction that we get from an ion in water that will produce either the conjugate acid or the conjugate base of that ion. Okay, so remember, we're differing by a proton. Okay, and that's all we're doing. Now, we have a few different situations that we've talked about um, or that I've listed for you in the notes. And conceptually, these can be a little bit difficult to understand, which is why I usually do this portion as a lab. Since we can't be in the lab, um, it makes it a little bit harder for us to understand this. So I'm going to post one or two videos um, or links to those in our Schoology page that you can help to kind of go through and hopefully get a better understanding of what hydrolysis is and how it works. Okay. Now, the first situation we're going to talk about is if we have neutral salts. Okay. So this is a strong acid with a strong base being mixed. So if we think about last year or the previous years when we've mixed acids and bases together, um, we can get these combinations. So if we think of sodium chloride, it's gonna be the mixture of sodium hydroxide, a strong base, and hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. Because we have full ionization in these, those sodium chloride ions are also going to be fully ionized and we're not going to get any hydrolysis happen. We are going to end up with a neutral solution. Okay. Um, when we talk about basic salts, okay. Now to be a basic salt, you want to have the cation of a strong base. Okay, so um, again, let's think about that sodium ion from that sodium hydroxide. Okay, um, and then also you're going to have the anion of a strong, or sorry, of a weak acid. So let's think of acetic acid. Okay, so when you combine these, um, you've got that acetic acid that is going to partially absorb some of the hydrogen. So the sodium acetate itself. Um, is going to fully ionize in solution. So let's write this out and understand a little bit about what's going on here. So 
so if we take, right, we put this situation in water, and out of this, we're going to get, right, because the sodium, this situation here, if we pay attention to previous units, we realize that this is a fully soluble situation. This sodium, however, is not going to react with the water. What we get, though, is we get this acetate ion mixing with water, and it is an equilibrium. It doesn't go full uh, full ionization here, um, and we end up with that acetic acid and some OH minus. Okay, so it was this weak acid component here that combines with water to make it a basic situation. Okay. And so this is that basic salt because this, we can look at this here, this is from a strong base, this is from a weak acid. Okay, so the strong base portion of this salt wins out to give us a slightly basic solution in that water. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is the um, an acidic salt. Okay, an acidic salt. Um, and I think the example I've given to you is this NH4Cl, ammonium chloride. Okay. Once again, we've got this chloride in here, so we get full ionization to this NH4 plus and the Cl minus, okay? Cl minus is not gonna combine with the water in this situation. However, we can take this NH4 plus, okay? Um, which is from a weak base, And the Cl minus is from a strong acid. Okay. And so that strong acid, we're not going to have any combination with that with the water. However, this NH4 plus can combine with water. And in this case, it's going to donate a proton to that water. Not always, but for some portions of this. And so we'll get NH3 plus H3O plus. Okay. Well, because we're in this equilibrium, we are creating some of this H3O+, plus, which is why we have an acidic uh, solution when all we're doing is taking an ionic salt and placing it in water. Very similar to what we saw happen with the um, sodium acetate, but that one being a strong base weak acid uh, produced a basic solution. Whereas here, because we have a weak base with a strong acid as our salt, we end up with a slightly acidic uh, solution. Okay. Now, the last one that we have here um, involves these small, highly charged metal ions. Okay, and the one I gave you was aluminum three plus. Okay. Now. What happens here with this, uh, with the aluminum, with the chromium, um, even with the iron three plus, is we don't see this uh, metal ion on its own. Okay, what we actually see is it gets bonded. Oops, I missed one. Okay, into what we call a hexahydrate, right? So remember, when we're talking about water, this H2O, okay, and we want to look at a um, how this soluble works anyways, is we've got these small bubbles of electrons around the hydrogens. We end up with a large electron count around the oxygens and another small amount of hydrogens. So we end up with this more negative charge in this area, and we end up with a slightly positive area up here by those hydrogens. 
So in essence, each one of these is bonded something similar to this. Okay, and we see that all the way around. Okay, and now when we put this in water, we've got a highly charged situation. So it's really easy for once we put this in water for this hydrogen to leave, okay, or this hydrogen up here to leave, okay, because we're removing that H plus. It's a little bit easier to remove that. And so if we're taking this and we're putting in these H pluses into solution, we're taking these highly charged metals and they bond with water to form these hexahydrates. But because it's such a large molecule with these hydrogens way far away on this, it's easy to seal that hydrogen and again, make a slightly acidic water solution. Okay, So that's the overall idea around what's happening with hydrolysis. It's the positive and negative ions in that salt that can bond with the water to provide as either with an acidic solution or a basic solution. Okay. Hopefully that helps with the explanation. Again, if you have any questions on this, please post those on Teams. And like I said, I'll post a couple of videos to help you understand this on our Schoology page. All right, that's our lesson for today. Be safe, stay healthy.